guys and welcome back to another amp trader tutorial so today what i'm going to be doing is updating the drill machine that i basically made many days well many days uh many many versions ago so uh i added a couple extra compartments to help with the storage and stuff like that uh there was some reports that it wasn't working completely with moving the inventory and stuff like that so i played around with some different ways and I determined that it was the most easiest with the clone command. So if you're not familiar with the clone command, it's basically clone and then you could do the coordinates. Now you can also use relative coordinates as well, which is what we used. And then basically what happens is the teal or the cyan basically is the starting location. The yellow is the uh, location to where it's going or pardon me, where the end location, and then the green is to where you want to basically move it to. Uh, basically what we've done is we've just made sure that we selected the compartments and then we moved it the direction that we needed to. There is also replace, and then when we're using the move function so we can move the entire thing in one, uh, one section. So that's basically what's going on here. Uh, there are, like I said, three different compartments. Uh, depends on what rotation you want. So if you're facing this way, then you want to make sure then the other two are facing the same way. Uh, for example, if I place this down here, I want the fuel compartment here, and I want the cargo compartment here. So again, it has to be all facing the same way, so make sure that you're facing the same way as you're placing it. So like that. Uh, the other thing that you might want to do is uh, get either some lava buckets or some car uh, charcoal or some coal. And you're going to want to put that in the fuel compartment for the storage block. Now, what this does is when the block is running, uh, it will basically get fuel from here. And then depending on how, how much the item actually can be smelted for, for example, lava can smelt 100 items. Uh, charcoal and coal can only smelt 8. So depending on the number that it can actually smelt, it will move that amount of, amount of blocks before requiring more fuel. So the cargo compartment is basically where all the items from the drill cart, so anything that gets mined in front of the cart, gets sent. So this is basically basically the temporary storage compartment until this gets filled up. And when it gets filled up, what it's going to do is it's going to basically place a barrel with the items and transfer all the items to the back of the barrel. So that's basically what's happening there. Um, yeah, so basically the drill cart itself, you might notice that the compartment the drill had it has its own inventory. So that is relevant to where this is going to be mined. So when it's facing this direction, it's going to be mining this block here, which is that block right here. And then it's going to be mining all this area. So again, the bottom one would be this one right here, center, and so on. So that's it's relevant to where it's going to be picking up the items. Uh, there are some conditions for basically getting cobblestone from stone. Some other blocks like dirt, mycelium and stuff will turn to dirt. Uh, these are through um, custom configurations. If you don't set it, then it's going to act like silk touch. So just remember that. Um, yeah, so the only other thing that I should know is if there is a space like this underneath, it's going to turn that to cobblestone so it can actually be a nice smooth transition and you don't need to worry about falling into caves and anything like that. Uh, let's grab some charcoal and we will start mining. So just put that in there. We shift and right click and then it basically turns on the machine. Uh, to turn it off, what we need to do is shift and right click again, and it will basically turn it off. Uh, you can see that all the blocks here have been mined, and they're all ending up in the cargo compartment. Uh, we haven't used all the fuel yet, so we'll just turn that on, and we'll just let it basically do its thing. Uh, maybe we'll come across a cave, and you can see uh, that this basically works on caves and stuff too. I'm not sure if we will come across a cave, but uh, we'll let it run for a couple minutes. Now, it doesn't place any torches or rails or anything like that, but um, it does um, require fuel. It does mine blocks like charcoal and stuff like, or coal, 
and it does move all four directions north east south and west and when it gets full it will basically dump the items onto the into a barrel or any container that you basically specify so getting a little bit of different items in here it will be basically fill up now how the cargo compartment basically works is if the cargo compartment um, has no more available empty slots it's going to dump the items it's not if the items get f like all the slots are completely full just that if the items are basically empty so I'm going to turn this off and then we're going to basically just demonstrate that it can dump the items again and there we go we have all the items that we basically collected in this particular thing here in the same slots even so it's completely the way it was set up all right so that's about it uh let me go ahead and go into crater and i'll show you the script there is quite a bit of script so i'll make sure to provide the procedures in a workspace um, or procedures in a zip file so you guys can easily set this uh, machine up yourself uh, also provide the textures and models like i usually do so let's hop into mcrater okay so let's start with our blocks themselves we have the drill cart the fuel cart and the cargo cart so we'll start with the cargo cart and we'll work our way up so the cargo cart has an update tick and what this is basically doing is it's going to run the cargo north script cargo east script cargo south script and the cargo west script depending on the rotation one of these will actually run uh, based on the ro rotation of the block itself. Uh, the other things that are important is we're making sure that the cart only can be placed south, west, north, or east. We're using a cutout because it uses a custom model. Um, the hitboxes, I've basically assigned that. I have a video planned for explaining how to do the hitboxes in a little bit easier way. I discovered something a little bit different on from my last tutorial so I'll share that in the future uh, the other materials you don't really need to worry about too much here you can set them out all the way that you want uh, the tick rate you might want to set make sure that it's set to the same as your I think the same as your drill cart I'm not sure a uh, little bit less than your drill cart so make sure that it's about half or whatever this will make sure that it will update a little bit faster and pass the um, procedures properly to the actual cart itself, like the drill cart. Uh, you also might want to set the color of the map and some other features in here, but most of it's uh, customizable. You will need a tile entity, so enable this block here. Set the inventory so it's bound to the block itself, so make sure that you make your inventory first. Set the items and set that all up and make sure to bind GUI on right click. So basically we want to open that. Uh, you want to set your slot number to 27 for the same amount for what I've used in the procedure. Uh, we want to make sure that it, the maximum slot stack size is 64. And we want to drop any items when the block is destroyed. That's really actually important. We don't need to worry about the hopper system, that's fine. And fluter storage, we're not using that. And again, the uh, cargo cart update um, update tick we're running those four procedures generation there's no generation so that's basically the cargo cart uh, the fuel cart is again very similar we're using a custom model all that stuff the model um, dimensions all this stuff can be customized uh, properties again you want to make sure the fuel cart has a, a tick rate of 10 this is the default number by default but Make sure it's less than your actual drill cart itself. Um, tile entity, exact same thing. Make sure that the fuel is the proper size, 27 slots, can stack up to 64. Right click on, um, when you when you right click on it, it open up the G GUI and make sure that it has its own GUI and that it drops the items. Uh, procedures there's actually no procedures for this one it's just the the cargo cart and that's for making sure the barrel gets left behind with the with the items and stuff uh, generation there's no generation either uh, then we have the drill cart uh, same thing make sure it's northeast southwest uh, your texture 
model bounding box. Um, then you have the settings that you can set here. Uh, now your tick rate for this one should be a little bit faster or pardon me, slower than your cart and fuel thing. This just makes sure that it has the other two have time to update before the drill cart moves. So basically set this to a little bit higher. It doesn't need to be too high. I would say maybe 10 ticks or something would be perfectly fine. Uh, outside of that, you can customize how this other you want. Uh, again, uh, GUI need, is needed for the MBT, so we're sending that. And then we're binding it to that particular one. So we have the drill cart inventory. And then when we right click on it, we want to open up the inventory itself. And for this one, we're only setting nine slots. So we only need the nine slots for each block that it's basically mining. And that's only a three by three area. So that's a total of nine blocks. And then we're going to basically drop the items when, if the block is destroyed. Make sure the maximum stack size is 64 as well. It's not necessary, but it's still a good idea to have. Uh, particles and fluid, or pardon me, um, energy and fluid storage, we don't really need. Triggers, uh, we have a couple triggers here. We have one for when the block is added and a update tick. So when the block is added, what we're doing is we're going to assign um, MBT for the block and we're going to set the MBT for a number called fuel. We're going to set that to zero. And the other one, what we're doing is we're, we have is block on and we're going to set this to false so it doesn't automatically run and it has no fuel. The other one that we're doing is we're basically running is block on, we're testing for that, and then we're running the drill north script, drill east script, drill south script, and drill west script. Now, depending on the rotation, one of those will run. Very similar to the actual drill cart. So that's the blocks. Uh, there is um, inventories. These are the inventories again. Uh, you can set them up however you want, but uh, you need a, all the the total stack size for all the different slots. So these are just regular input slots, and uh, I've added a couple text just to make it look a little bit prettier. That's all that's really going on there. Drill cart, same issue, uh, or same thing, and the or pardon me, the cargo cart, same thing, and then cargo cart only has nine slots. So what I've done is I've set zero here, one here, two here, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that's basically how that one's set up. And that leaves us to tags. So basically uh, what I'm doing here is I'm basically putting it a tag for charcoal and coal because they're basically the same thing and I'm using fuel slash coal. So basically what this will do is it will basically allow us to use um, this particular tag to make sure that we are digging machine, which is our namespace, and it's an item. So when we use the test for the item, we don't need to test for both types of coal. We're just gonna test for the um, namespace and then fuel slash coal and then basically we can test for both of these at the same time because they they do the same amount of speed and everything like that or distance so then we have our dirt block tag this basically is used to basically determine um what blocks basically should return dirt rather than the block it currently is at uh, so again our namespace this is a block tag and then we're basically going to um, just have our tag set as dirt. So it'll be um, our namespace colon and dirt for testing for the tag. The other one is uh, can't, break, can't break block tag. So this one basically um, is used for things that require blocks not being broken. So things like air, uh, water, and lava are in this particular tag. So again, our namespace it's under block tag and then it's can't break for the namespace or the uh, tag name itself. All right, so that's basically that. All right, so these are all the procedures. This is under the procedures folder here and we have all the different rotations and stuff. So I'll cover one of the rotations and then I'll basically explain how they work and stuff like that. So we have the 
drill cart update tick. We have the cargo cart update tick. These are the two update ticks. And then we have the drill turn on and off. Now this is basically through a right click procedure and we're testing for a drill cart. So this is the one that we're testing for. And then we're also testing if we're sneaking and depending if we're sneaking or not, we're going to toggle the uh, is block on procedure for the drill cart itself. So we're just testing if the drill cart is on. If that's true, then it's going to basically turn it off. If it's uh, not true, then what we're going to do is turn it on. That's all that's going on here. And we're making sure that it's running under a global procedure. Uh, we could actually run a, another procedure down below uh, a procedure block. So we can basically cancel the event so the um, inventory doesn't actually open when we right click on the block that would be a little bit more useful as well so I'll make sure to save it like that and then it won't open up the inventory and it'll be a little bit easier to manage so we'll save that uh, the drill block uh, block added this is basically that one that I covered and then we have our cargo rotations these are the ones for the script for basically the cargo when it's going to dump the items so I'll cover that quickly there's just a little bit of script on this one, not too much, but um, I'll still cover it nonetheless. Uh, so what we're doing is we're going to set our basic variables up here. Uh, we need to set our cargo um, cart max slot size. So this is 27. And then we want to make sure that the drop block stack size is the same amount. And then what we want to do is basically test if empty slots equals zero. So if there is no slots left, then what we want to do is basically make sure that this is zero. Uh, test slot, we're going to make this is uh, run down below. This is basically the starting point. So you don't need to set that any for any particular thing. Uh, your drop block is going to be the one that you're going to be putting the items into. So if you want to set it as a chest or something, uh, you will need to basically define the block as a chest. Now, um, chests are here, so you can set it up like that. Barrels work as well because they have the same amount of slots. Um, you can use shulker boxes, I think, because they have also the 27 slots. Uh, if you have custom blocks, then you can run that as well. So I'm just going to use the barrel for this one. Uh, down below, this is basically going to test if the slots, there is no available slots uh, that are empty. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to take that number, that test slot number, and it's going to test for the maximum slot size for the cart. So this is the maximum size for the cart for 27 slots. And what it's going to do is it's going to basically test if the count of the item is zero. If it is, what it's going to do is it's going to increase a number called empty slots. So this one right here, and it's going to increase that by one. So if this doesn't get increased at all, what it's going to do is it's going to basically go and say, is empty slots equal to zero? If it is, then what we want to do is dump the block. So basically what happens is we're going to replace the block behind uh, depending on the direction. So again, the direction is listed up, uh, up here. We're testing if there's an air block in that lo location behind, and then we're going to place the block, which is our block that we defined up here. After which we're going to basically um, set the cargo slots and the dump block slots, uh, same as here. This is the ID for the um, both slots. So when you're actually uh, dumping the items, what we're going to do is basically get the slot number and stuff. So. Again, uh, we're going to run the cargo maximum slots and then the drop block maximum slots. And then what we're going to do is basically go ahead and dump all that stuff into the chest. So we're going to test for the slot count. If the slot count is equal to uh, zero. So this is going to be our dump block again. And this is going to be relative to the coordinates. So this is basically where we placed it. This is where we're going to be adding the items. And then what we've done is we're basically set the amount of the items from our cargo slot and the amount from, or the specific item from the cargo slot in the same cargo slot number. So again, this is our cargo slot ID for where we're going to be dumping or where we're getting it from. 
And then what we're doing is we're going to set that block in our cargo block uh, slot number. So again, we've only increased it by, uh, we have only increased the number by, um, we haven't actually increased it yet. So basically it's just running. And then what we're doing is we're going to remove that item. So make sure to set the coordinates as well. This is important. It needs to be the same as where you're setting the block. And for the other one, what we're doing is we're just going to remove that entire instance of the item from the inventory from our cargo um, cart. So basically that will basically remove the items completely after it's done. And then it will increase the slot for the cargo slot by one. And once that's, or the dump slot block by one. And once that's done, it will basically increase or reset that after it can't find any more slots to fill it in. And then it will basically set the cargo slot ID plus one. So it will do the next slot and it will keep doing that until all the slots are empty. So that's basically all that's going on here um, for each one of these cargo procedures. It's just different, different coordinates where it's basically dumping the block. All right, so that leaves us with the drill script. So I'll do the north one. Uh, they're all pretty much the same. So we have two uh, conditions up here. These are block states, our fuel cart and our cargo cart. So you wanna set those particular blocks up. Uh, you wanna set the maximum drill cart uh, slots to nine because that's how many we have in our inventory for the actual block. And then we want to set the fuel slot and our cart cargo uh, cart to 27 both. Uh, we're then testing for the direction. This is very important. So we're only running it when this direction is being run. And then we're going to start getting the fuel and stuff like that. So this is basically just testing if the fuel is greater than um, zero, then what this is going to do is basically um, decrease the fuel by one each time the block is moved. And then it's going to basically run all this particular script. And what this is doing is it's um, basically getting testing for the cargo cart. And it's going to basically move the items to the cargo cart from where, uh, where it basically moves from. Down below, what we have is the uh, part where it's basically mining. So basically we have all these per uh, particular blocks here. We're testing if the all these slots are empty uh, for the drill cart itself, because this is running on the drill cart. So we're testing if all of them are empty, all the slots. And then what we're going to do is we're going to test for each one of the places that it's going to actually mine from. And right here, what we've done is we've added some conditions. Now this will depend on where you want to set up your namespace and stuff. So again, you'll have to update these particular variables. I think we've been fine up until this point. So what this will do is the variables here um, can't break. Uh, yeah, so these ones can't break. Uh, this will basically test if um, the block can't break the item, or pardon me, is not can't break item, So, or can't break. What this means is it's testing if it can break the item itself, it, and it will start running the mine script. So inside that, what we have is we're testing if the block is stone, and then if it is stone, what we're going to do is we're going to instead run this per, uh, procedure uh, this basically just converts the block into its converts the block that we're mining into the block um, inventory, but we don't want to do that with this particular one. We just want to mine cobblestone, so we've basically set the item specifically to cobblestone, and we're putting it into the block's inventory. Uh, the other thing that we're doing is we're testing for dirt. So uh, dirt basically is the one that tag that we basically had before and we're just basically going to put dirt in instead. So again, you want to make sure that these two tags are set up the properly. So you want your namespace and then the tag name after that. It doesn't matter what you call it as long as it's the same as your tag that you're gonna be using these two particular ones for. Uh, after we're basically just removing the block and then we're doing that for the entire pane 
um, in front of the drill machine block itself. Uh, after which, uh, what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and uh, replace the floor underneath the drill machine. So what we're doing right in these th uh, three conditions is we're going to place cobblestone if there is um, can't break any um, can't break uh, the the tag underneath. So. If it's water, air, or if it is lava, what it's going to do is basically place cobblestone in that particular location underneath the drill block so you have a path to walk over. Uh, underneath uh, the that, what we're doing is we're basically just moving the machine itself. Now, if it does not have fuel, way up here we're testing if the block is greater than fuel or greater than zero so if it has fuel and then we've basically run all of those procedures that we just covered now if it doesn't have fuel what we're doing is we're going to test for the fuel cart behind and then what we're going to do is we're going to basically test uh, set the slot number and then we're going to test for a couple of our fuels so the first one uh, is basically just a lava bucket what we need to do for a lava bucket is we're going to test for the location uh, if it has a lava bucket, then we're going to remove the lava bucket from that slot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place a bucket in that same slot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set our fuel value to 100 or whatever value you want to give that particular fuel item. And for the coal, uh, same thing, but we're using a tag instead. So our namespace is here, and then there's a colon, and then it's fuel slash coal and that's the tag that we basically used here so you'll have to update that one as well and then what you want to do is you want to basically just remove the item and set the fuel to eight so that's basically what we're doing same with the lava bucket but this one's basically running for the coal and this is just basically testing for all the slots in the um, maximum fuel cart uh, size so inventory size so that's basically what that's doing so that's basically it. It's uh, again, there's a procedure for each one rotation for the um, block itself. So there's one for east, south, and west, and that's all run based on the um, update tick for that particular block. So make sure that the tick rate is a little bit slower than your cargo cart and all that other parts, just to make sure that runs properly and you should be fine and make sure to update your tags in the um the drill cart um procedures in here but outside of that that's all that i have time for today if you are new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out